Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. It is a good day, Jared. When your Columbus crew are moving on to the conference semifinals. This is this is what happens when I don't when we when you run long on the first episode and you don't do Kyle's corner, so he has to do the crew shout out in the first minute instead of the last minute of the show. Amen. <laughs> no denial. I think they play Orlando. I think they play Orlando next. So um, uh oh, yeah. The spikes. Are are we enemies with spikes now? Spikes. 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 Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, we'll, Spikes we'll is down in the. For anyone listening, Spikes is a Patreon guy from Orlando who's uh, currently in the chat. So. One of our sleep cats. Right, you can well, blow let's, another let's two goal lead. Listen, we got, we got, listen, we listen. We got, a lot of, we got a lot to cover. We got a lot to cover. Right, we, uh, we got a lot of game. We got a lot of games to cover here, so let's not waste any more time here. Uh, but actually, first, uh, just a few few news here because there's actually uh, some big ones here. Uh, Jimbo Fisher out. At Texas A and M, he gets a he gets a nice seventy five million dollar check on his way out the door there, which dwarfs the previous buyout record, which I think was Notre Dame at thirty three. Um, man, I wish someone would pay me seventy five million dollars to go away. I would go. <laughs> I would go so far. And so hard and so fast for seventy five million dollars. Hey, Jared, would you would would you would you quit the sleep cast right now for seventy five million dollars? Yeah, I sure would. Hey, Jared, would you leave the state of Ohio for seventy five million dollars? Yeah, I love Ohio. I I, I like I know for some people like, oh, I leave Ohio. That's a real bit. And then, no, I love Ohio. I, I would hate to leave Ohio. Seventy five million dollars. I'm gone. Um. The sloop who Ohio, where's that? Yeah, exactly. Sun card. Uh, exactly. Franklin, Franklin fires his offensive coordinator, uh, Mike Yurkich. Your I stitch. Think rightfully so. Yeah. I, again, I, I said it, I said it in the uh, Monday episode. I said it in Scarlet and grade. He deserved to be fired for only running singleton nine times against us. Did Franklin fire himself yet? Uh, he should. should. Listen. Yeah. Uh, Listen, I love what James Franklin has done at Penn State. I think he was I think he was a great hire. And I think he was the exact guy to get them from where they were to where they are. He he will leave Penn State a better place than when he found it. But he's not the guy to take that take them to the next level. Uh, He. If you want to, if you, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. If you've peeked ahead at the 2024 schedule, he he doesn't have to play either Ohio State or Michigan next season. So he's got that going for him. He can build a team, but he can't win the big ones. That's essentially what I'm saying, Spikes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other the other big one here because they are. They are high up on the rankings here. Uh, Texas out with their their uh, starting running back and Jonathan Brooks for the for the year. Um, ACL Te- was it? Yeah, uh, Texas has had a very bad injury year. It's, it's it's they they could they they could be a lot better than they are. They like Ohio State last year. Ohio State had a horrible injury problem last year. Um, Texas has had a horrible injury problem this year. And as we're about to get into, uh, here we are with two weeks left in the season and the SEC title game has already been set. Yeah, the Big Ten West has already been set. Um, The Big Ten East, uh, to no one's surprise, will be set when Ohio State and Michigan, the clock hits zero. Uh, Spike says kind of this year, too, for us. Um. Yes and no. I feel like last year was a lot worse. I know this year hasn't been great, but last year was 
Uh, I feel like I feel like this year, with the exception of like a Mecha Buka and and um, anyway, move. We need to move on. Uh, yeah, it's just it's been uh, outside of a Mecha Buka and uh, maybe one or two other guys. It's just been uh, you know miss a game or two and then come back. I was really hoping you were going to correct that, Spikes. I was, wasn't sure what you were trying to say. That was a very unfortunate um, autocorrect your, that, that, that your phone did. I wasn't really wasn't sure what you were trying to say there. All right, let's let's move let's move on here. Um, we'll move on quickly with a lot of these, a lot of these games, a lot of games to cover here. Uh, Alabama takes care of business against Kentucky, forty nine twenty one. No surprise there. Yeah, I mean, Kentucky's a a decent team, but they're not a team that's gonna hang. That's that's just who Kentucky is. Yep. Mention mentioned about Penn State here, losing to Michigan at home, twenty four to fifteen. Thought Penn State would have had a little bit more offensive power in this game, but as mentioned, Franklin firing his offensive coordinator as a result for that. But. Uh, I but yeah, I think they're totally mishandling the teaching and the development of Aller. Um, he's a guy who can throw it downfield, but always runs into trouble whenever he does throw it downfield. And I think part of that's play design. And I think part of it is they only ask him to throw downfield when he absolutely has to, which is, of course, the last time, you know, it's not the time, the exact time you don't want to. Um. Yeah, uh, and they're outside of their one tackle. Their offensive line is iffy as well, which is obviously, as Ohio State fans know, is is not helpful. Yep. Team Chaos, team Team Chaos takes another soul here. This time it's the Jayhawks of Kansas. Uh, Texas Tech defeats them sixteen to thirteen. Yeah. Um. You know. Uh, it's it's Kansas. Like the fact that they're seven and three still is a huge accomplishment for them. Congrats yeah. to them. They're having a good year. They're, they're just they're not a front runner. But, you know, you take steps, right? And they're taking yeah. steps. That's what it's all you can do as a program. Yeah, and we got a trio of uh, of 20 plus ranked teams barely surviving here. Tulsa, uh, Tulsa barely. Um, that Tulsa Tulane barely beating Tulsa 24 to 22. Arizona hangs on to a three point victory over Colorado. And then Kansas State takes care of business over Baylor 59 to they, 25. Yeah, they, they, they I, I wasn't sure what you were saying with their like three teams that barely hung on. I'm like, hey, Kansas State boat raced Baylor. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I was um, looking, I was looking at, I was looking at the next one here about to say, but anything about those ow. three games or, uh, Coach Prime uh, down to four and six in Colorado land. As it turns out, going into your press conferences and shit talking your own offensive line isn't the uh, isn't the best way to to coach a team. Yeah. Is the yeah, SEC they, title they game Bama and Georgia? Yes. And it's it's already set. It's on card. It's yeah. it's locked Here. in. Colorado's got to win their last two games here to be bowl eligible. And Dion has already said he doesn't care about going to a bowl because apparently he doesn't pra he doesn't value the weeks of practice that that affords you. Dude. Practice? Florida yeah. Florida, Florida State beats Miami by seven. Uh, I guess I'll give Miami some credit here. Um, give Miami credit, or maybe it's Florida State. Um, this is this is this is who them, Florida get, State giving is. Giving them too much credit here, but yeah, seven point victory for Florida State here. Why do you need to practice when you're kicking half the team out of the program in two weeks? I uh, exactly, Gangland. Oh, and he, and he just and uh, Coach Prime just lost a five star receiver too. Pretty much, just says. I don't know if Prime is going to be there when I when I'm when I show up on campus. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, well, I don't want to spend the entire episode talking about the um, and anyway, 
Uh, yeah, uh, this is just kind of who Florida State is. They don't. They're, they're not a team to blow out teams. Um, I don't know. They, they've they have some really good resume items. I'm not trying to say otherwise. Um, but when they play these. I mean, so the difference is, is that like. For the sake of the conversation, like Kentucky, Miami, similar teams. Yeah, they're like not top 25 teams, but they are like top 50 teams. You know what I mean? Alabama embarrasses Kentucky. Florida State kind of beats Miami. I don't know. I, I'm 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 losing I'm losing all faith in Florida State. And I'm also well, concerned that when that they get that. into a team with like a solid defense, that their quarterback's not going to make it through. He's been banged around a lot this year. He's left several games hurt. They run him way too damn much. I feel I just I'm afraid you can put him in a game with Bama or Georgia or Ohio State or someone. They're just going to. He's not going to survive more on that in a little bit here. Uh, another team chaos and a big, big blowout out here. UCF 45 to three over Oklahoma State. So, Kyle, you're telling me that a heavily favored ranked Ohio State, excuse me, OSU team um, got boat raced by a team wearing gold and black. Unexpectedly. Not going there, Jared. No? Nope, not going there. No? You should be okay. ashamed. Okay. Speaking of speaking of being boat raced by a team in black and gold here, Missouri. I don't know if they're black and gold, but I'm just going to call them black and gold here. Missouri. That's fine. Boat races Tennessee 36 to 7. What else? I mean, what else would they call themselves? I don't because it's not a yellow. It's definitely not a yellow. Anyway, I really like this Missouri team. I really do. Yes. I like their quarterback a lot. Yeah. I like their wide receivers a lot. Um, I don't think their defense is quite good enough to. I mean, they already have two losses. Um, their their defense is going to make sure that they stay out of the top 10. Um, but it is a really fun team to watch if you've not watched Missouri play football. UCF wore sky blue. They did wear sky blue in that game. They did, yeah. Weirdly, I'm not sure what that was about even, but that's yeah. not their normal colors. I think, I think I think Missouri is the biggest um, surprise that I've seen this year. Like nobody talked about Missouri and then all of a sudden come out of nowhere here and here they are, eight and two here. Their wide receiving core is nuts. Yeah, I'll say that. Washington. Washington escapes a, a win against Utah 35 to 28. Bike says it's an alt jersey from when their mascot was an astronaut before they had a football team. Okay. I'm just, you didn't have a foot. So what? Okay. They should have stayed with the astronaut because like night is so like generic, like anyone could be the Knights. Uh, yeah, Washington has um, kind of kind of like, of course, Utah is way better than Miami. So let's just state that right off the top. But Washington kind of like Florida State, they just they let teams hang around who they probably shouldn't let hang around. And I don't know. Yeah, I mean, going I'm sorry. Going into the going into the fourth quarter, Utah was up 28-24. Yeah. I, I the more I think about it, the more I ask myself, are we sure they beat Oregon? That actually happened. And then then I remember they get to play again in the Pac-12 championship game. So yes, Jerry. Yep. Yeah, I I know that they did. Mm -hmm. I'm being facetious. But they get to play, but they're gonna play again. I I don't know if that's like that, that has to be like locked in, locked in at this point, right? That's Washington and Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game. 
let's look here. Has to be. With USC Washington. losing, with Utah losing. Washington plays Oregon State and Washington State. Oregon plays Arizona State and Oregon State. Uh, so far, um, technically, no. Technically, no. Because if, for some reason, Washington lose their next two games and one of those is Oregon State and Oregon State goes undefeated uh, or wins their last two games, they would go in. So it's not yet. No. Officially, no. But Washington would have to lose both of their next two games. I And then, or well, and I assume Oregon's also in, of course, they beat Oregon, beat Oregon State. I mean, I mean, Oregon, Oregon State plays both Washington and Oregon back to back weeks here. Oh, I thought Oregon and Oregon. No, of course not. They play the last game of the year. Of course they do. Is that mm-hmm. the, no, Washington, Washington State's the Apple. What's the Oregon, Oregon yeah. State game? What's that one called? Is that good old fashioned hate? Is that what that is? That's one of my favorite. Civil War. Uh, they call it Civil War. What well, you, you can't you can't be on the West Coast and and use the word Civil War. I'm sorry. Yeah, you weren't there. Move, you don't know. Move, all right. Moving on here. Uh, Iowa shuts out Rutgers 22 to nothing. Yes, Iowa scored 22 points in this game. Uh, speaking of speaking of Oregon State, 62 points. Uh, beats up Stanford uh, 62 to 17 in that game. Uh, talked about a little bit about Georgia here. They take care of business here. Uh, more more on Georgia here in a little bit. 52 to 17. Uh, likewise, Oklahoma defeats West Virginia soundly, fifty-nine to twenty. Uh, LSU scores some late points late in the um, fourth quarter, makes it a more seemingly more convincing win over Florida, fifty-two to thirty-five. And then just to just to wrap out wrap up the last games here, Texas beats TCU twenty-nine twenty-six. Uh, UNC. Defeats Duke in double overtime, forty-seven to forty-five, and Oregon beats USC thirty-six to twenty-seven. You 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 just hit fast forward on that. I did. Yep. You're just just gonna go through the rest of them. Just, Anything just about go. those games you want to talk about? <laughs> just just you you just gonna you just gonna rattle off the rest of the games. I did. Yes. Because I know we're gonna spend a lot of time in our next segment here. <laughs> all right yeah let's just move on to the next segment then let's let's get into the tier list all right here we go tier list uh we left the tier list last week with our top four being number one ohio state number two georgia number three washington number four for florida state and our eight here in no particular order being michigan texas alabama penn state oregon Ole Miss and Louisville. Um, and we had some teams in the B tier too. I'm not going to ring. I'm not going to rattle those off. Um, let's 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 shuffle some teams around here in the S tier. Shall we? Let's shuffle some teams. Missouri. Why did I say well, Missouri? Georgia gets a big win over a top 10 team in incredibly convincing fashion and they look good um as much as i hate to do this i think I, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna say we shuffle georgia ahead of ohio state yeah i think so too that's that's my first gut instinct here it's georgia then ohio state and then washington i think washington stays at third there they got a um uh, I I think Washington got a um a a nice top twenty five victory over Utah, so that's that's another resume builder for them there. But I think I think it's time to move. I think it's time to move Michigan up to S tier with their victory over Penn State, and then move Florida State down to A tier. Yes, I was gonna say it before you said it, so you're not gonna get any <laughs> fight from me on that. Um. So our new S tier is Georgia at one, Ohio State at two, Washington at three, Michigan at four. Um, 
now Florida State's obviously going to remain in our A tier. That's yep. Um, currently in our A tier, Texas, who had a very close game against a very bad TCU. Uh, I will say this about TCU. I, one, haven't watched them play much recently. And two, one of the reasons they're so bad is because they brought back no experience. So if there's someone out there that wants to tell me, well, actually, TCU is playing pretty well late in the season because their guys are actually getting some experience now. I would believe them. Um, but at the same time. I don't know. It, it, Texas still won. I'm not going to move them down to B tier. And we don't order A tier. So, I mean, Texas can stay. Um, we're not going to drop Texas. Zach, it's not not necessary by any means. Not yet. No. They still won. So, um, so in the so in the A tier, uh Alabama Yeah. stays where they're at. Just just <laughs> an inch behind Texas. Alabama's playing their best football right now while Texas is not. But you got to give that edge to Texas because of the because Win. of the uh, matchup head to head this season. I agree. Penn State, Penn State. I want to leave them an A tier. I want to leave them an A tier. I want to leave them an A. All right, present your case. Uh, they lost in pretty close competitive fashion against the teams that are two and four in our on our list. I'm sorry to play the SEC card here, but they have the best two losses in the country. If anybody, if anybody with two losses deserves to be an A tier, it's Penn State. Now, if you want to tell me no one with two losses deserves to be an A tier, then we can have that conversation. All right. So then here, here's here's the next case then what's their best wins okay that's a that's a good question you tell me i mean i mean quality quality losses yes but this isn't this isn't the was it last year was it yeah last year when texas lost but yet they moved up in the rankings this isn't this isn't that kind this isn't that here penn state their best victory i guess iowa yeah, they, they shut out Iowa 31 nothing. Okay. Okay. And then West Virginia. Maybe West Virginia. Who just got boat raced by Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. But but West Virginia, by the way, not a not a bad team. No, be better than expected. Yeah, better when when expected, when they beat West Virginia, none of us really thought anything of it. And it turns out West Virginia, again, not a top 25 team, but like a top 50 team. Yeah. I, I guess it's fine keeping Penn State at A. They're just in the very last part of A tier. Would be would be me here, because Ole Miss, Ole Miss with their third loss now is it second? Is this their second loss? But but they got but they got blown raised. out. Yeah, is that's that, both games. Didn't both of their losses come in just boat races though? Um, I don't feel like their loss to Bama was that bad, was it? Well, it was 14 points. Yeah. It was 14 points. So uh, I'm, I'm fine moving Ole Miss down, not because nece not necessarily because they lost to Georgia, but because they were non-competitive in the game against Georgia. That's that's the big key for me. All right. And then George or excuse me, um, Oregon, Louisville. Yep. Stay stays right there. I. And like, I'm also fine. I'm like we kind of, I, I just don't see who I can put, who I can put into the A tier here. If there's anybody in the A tier. Georgia doesn't looking, play an that, FCS that, powerhouse next week, but it is Tennessee. Yeah. But their big rivalry at the end of the year is the Gamecocks. So, all right, or excuse so, me, it's Georgia tech, it's Georgia tech. So, so, some other team, some other teams here. I'm just going to throw out here. The only one loss team that's not in A tier is Tulane. I don't feel comfortable moving them up, moving them up when their best victory is 
Tulsa this weekend or Memphis. Yeah. Or maybe it's their 17 point loss to Ole Miss. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, I the, mean, and, it, the, and the two lost teams here, we don't have any two lost teams in the A tier. Uh, Oregon State, Missouri. Uh, well, actually, Penn State we have up in A tier. Right. Ole Miss, Oklahoma. Um, and North Carolina are the are the last two lost teams. Uh, I'm so not moving. Just... I'm not moving North Carolina up into B tier. I'm not doing that. Um, we could talk about moving Arizona up if we wanted, but there are three loss, so that makes that difficult. Um. I'm all for moving Oregon State up if they win next week. That's fair. That's but fair. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to do it yet. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move Oregon State to the to the front of B here. Um G <laughs> Spike says uh James Madison simply out of solidarity for their stupid postseason ban. If you don't know James Madison is not allowed to participate in the postseason this year because when you move subdivisions, which they did, they moved up from the FCS into the FBS. When you move subdivisions, you are not eligible to play in the postseason for two years, which makes a lot of sense if you're moving down. Why on earth that rule exists? When you're moving up, like if some, well, no, no, but it, it is if, and only, <laughs> only that way, right? If I, sorry, Eastern Michigan, I don't know why you're the one that popped into my head, but if Eastern Michigan said, "Screw this, we're going to the FCS," they're not allowed to participate in the FCS playoffs for two years. And that makes a lot of sense. They have 30 more scholarship players than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. They should, but in the opposite direction, it makes no sense. Yeah. It only makes sense if you're UConn. Yep. Oh, um, those teams that sure in there in the beat in the B tier, we have here, Oregon state, Missouri, Oklahoma, JMU, Liberty, um, Tulane, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, fine with B tier. Kansas goes well, down to C tier. Okay, goes down uh, to C tier with their third loss. Yeah. Now yeah. I think one team, one team should move up. One team should move up, Jared. Well, hold on, hold on. Oklahoma State gets their third loss uh, in incredibly ugly fashion. Should we move Oklahoma State down? Is Colorado finally M? We've had Colorado down in M for a minute now. Yeah, I think since September or maybe early October. Uh, I, I, I want to Oklahoma State again, not just because they got their third loss, but for losing 45 to three oh. against a five and five Central Florida. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Yes. Move them down. Yep. Move them down. Yep. Um, Iowa case for Iowa going up to B tier. Um, how they Two lose losses. matters for winning the West. Spikes makes a good point there. Mm -hmm. Yep, they have. They have They're going to the losses. conference championship game. I'm the my biggest issue with this is that Penn State obliterated them. Not that they lost to Penn State, but because Penn State embarrassed them. That's my biggest issue. But Spikes does accurately point out that they are going to the big 10 championship game. Brian Ferentz is fired. Uh, Kirk Ferentz still has a job. Brian Ferentz is out. And they, and they scored the, and they scored <laughs> the most point. And they, yes, they, they did score the most points in a game since September. And who is that game against Sparty? Oh, that wasn't nearly the funny answer that I wanted. 
Yeah, we're we're gonna move Iowa up, and I don't necessarily like it. Um, but B, I think B is largely about like postseason activity. You know what I mean? Um, it's about sort of being an influential person in your conference. I think historically, B tier is has a chance to win their conference champion, win their conference, which technically. Yes. Listen, and I know I know Ohio State fans don't even want to think about the game not going our way again. So forgive me for even bringing this up. If Iowa, with all of their Iowaness and everything that is Iowa, plays against Michigan in the Big Ten championship game. The Michigan team that didn't throw a single pass that counted in the second half against Penn State. They're going to they're going to devolve football. They're going to devolve college football by 40 years. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. How are we supposed to get past like old man football stereotypes as a Big Ten? If Iowa and we threw the ball eight times against Penn State, Michigan. They only threw the ball eight times. Eight times it counted. Eight times in the stat book. They only threw the ball eight times. Michigan is army now. Did they do it out of solidarity for the military man that they fired? Maybe. More at 11. Um, I don't see anybody else here. I'm looking at all the other teams here. I don't see anybody else. I would love to move Arizona up to B tier, but I just, I just can't. It's three losses. It's a little too late. Um, a little too late with the, with the move of their freshman quarterback here, but they're winning. They're winning though. And maybe, maybe we can move them up to B tier. If they beat Utah next, next weekend, maybe, maybe not, yeah. probably not, but that's fair. I'll, 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 I'll accept that. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, nobody else, nobody else I think is worthy going up to B tier that I see. What about chat? Chat, are we missing anything? Are we missing any one? Uh is is there an M tier candidate that we should be discussing? Um I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um I mean, yeah, I mean, oh. it's it's a little too harsh to maybe say Tennessee. Um, I don't know how that would work. I, it, I think well, if ACC Bama beats ACC. Georgia, they probably send two to the playoffs. Um, It's definitely possible, but I won't say it's a certainty. Right oh, now, the playoffs are very crowded. For a one loss team to get in, and again, we have two two weeks of football plus one. There's a lot of opportunity for a lot of chaos. And we always, this time of year, run through these wild scenarios of if this team wins out, and if that team wins out, and then inevitably those teams don't win out. But it would be very, very, very difficult. And I don't care if you're Georgia with one loss or if you are Ohio State or Michigan with one loss. If you if you don't win, if you if you're not undefeated or if you're not a conference champion, I, I don't see right now again, two plus one weeks of college football left to play. There, there could be a lot of avenues opened up in that time. Yep. But right now, you either need to be undefeated or win your conference. And if and and and, and if it's that or, that or needs to be the Pac-12, which is surprisingly good this year, the Big Ten or the SEC. 
worst case scenario for everybody. I don't even think that applies to the ACC or the Big 12. Worst case scenario is Alabama runs the table right here. That's that's the worst case for getting two Big 10 teams in. That's that is the worst scenario. Yeah, I mean, ideally, you want even even ideally, let's let's just say even if it's Alabama, Alabama or Georgia wins, let's just let's just say, well, let's just say it matters a lot. Let's say that's that's the nightmare scenario for the loser of the Ohio State Michigan game. Yes, yes. Alabama, Alabama would get in. You want Georgia to just finish off Bama. Yes, Georgia would get in. That's two teams there. Winner of Ohio State. In Michigan would get in, and then you you got a and then you got Florida State undefeated, and then Washington undefeated. And if you're going to go based on resume, it's got to be Washington then, because then they would have they would beat Oregon twice then. Right. Um. Yeah, the committee does not want. <laughs> Alabama to to win out here because that's going to make their job so much harder. Right. And so I'll even say this, like if, okay, again, if Oregon and Washington both win out through the regular season, which again, they, they both have to play Oregon state, Oregon state's fully capable of upsetting either of those teams. All right. Like that's on the table. It's not likely, but it's on the table. Um, oh, and by the by the way, like what I mean by like two Big Ten teams getting in, that that's and that, that's meaning that Ohio State would lose. If Michigan loses, there's no way they they get in. Not not based on their resume. Right. Ohio State has the better chance. If if you're just like a Big Ten guy, I don't know who is. There there are SEC people who are SEC people. That's a thing, but there aren't like big 10 people. Um, But if you're like a, if you're like a big 10 person and you really, really just, if you're the commissioner of the league and you're trying to maximize your profits, the ideal scenario is that Ohio state loses on the final play to Michigan, because as you pointed out, Kyle, um, Ohio state has a much better opportunity as getting in because of their resume um, versus versus Michigan. Um, who, does Notre, who does Notre Dame play left here? Oh, they play Wake Forest and Stanford. Okay. Why do I okay. care? <laughs> well, I'm, I know Ohio state's resume. Their resume. I know their resume is, is what's important. The ideal scenario yeah. is Ohio State, Bama, Oregon, and FSU. Ideal oh. in what sense? Like, what when you say ideal, what are you trying to set up? Are you trying to just make sure Ohio State gets the number one seed? If that's your goal, yes. Huh. That's 2014. Oh, because yeah. he just wants to. He just wants it to be 2014. It's a whoosh right over my head. Whoosh, <laughs> right over my head. All right. I, I think this is good. I think this is. I think this is uh you say he really said good. you say Georgia would need to lose twice for that scenario. Maybe. I don't know about that. Because here, here I no, I, I know what you mean, Spikes. He says to not get so. in. No, I I really don't think if so. if Ohio because you, you got you got a Big Ten undefeated, you got Bama one loss conference champion. You have an Oregon one loss conference champion and an undefeated conference champion. You got in Florida four, State. Yeah, Florida State. You got four conference championships teams yeah. going at it. Georgia Georgia should be left out. I I'm not saying a hundred percent. But will they? I think so. Yeah, um, it's, it's especially especially if you have. But I don't know, State Spikes. To, to, to your point, Spikes, I don't know. Like, I I would be mad but not shocked if in that scenario, Georgia got in. Uh, I would be mad, but I wouldn't be shocked. 
do they take into account the past two seasons as well? They're not supposed to. Not supposed to. Um, but will they? I don't think so. But they do. I, I don't think they do. But again, like they, they turn over a third of the committee every year. That's one of the people always say that they want some sort of consistency out of the committee. Well, too bad. They replace a third of the committee every year. You're not you, you you have brand new people in there with their own ways of looking at things. Jared has inside people. No, that's just a published fact. That's a, that's that's just that's a known known. Looking at. And I know we, we typically do this for. Uh, Friday. Friday's episode, but. This weekend, this weekend, we're going to. We're going to find a lot. We're going to find out a lot of things after this weekend here. Listen, and I love going through playoff scenarios. It's one of my favorite things about the four team playoff. And one of the things I'm going to miss the most next year when they switch to the 12 team playoff, because it just it feels too big to even try and run these scenarios. But. I don't know, man, like. Every year we do this and every year we just assume if this team wins out and if that team wins out. But guess what? It never plays out like that. It just straight up never plays out like that. Stupid, unexpected upsets happen all the damn time. We, yeah, we won't care about the fringe teams unless it's us. Listen, James Franklin, who's I already said at the beginning of this episode, isn't the guy Penn State needs. He's going to get his career extended at Penn State by a few years because he doesn't have to play Ohio State or Michigan next year. And because he he can't get Penn State into a four team playoff, but he can get him into a 12 team playoff. So. You know, he, his, his career is going to get new life only because it's it's, it's just going to get easier around him. Is it the, the path is just much easier to the playoff next year on multiple fronts. So yep. Penn State will make the playoffs next year and it'll save James Franklin's job. But then, like, at a certain point, it becomes, OK, now win a playoff game. Yeah. That you know, it just becomes that instead of making the playoffs. Um, anything else? Any any other movements you want to have here? So right now we have Georgia, Ohio State, Washington, Michigan, in that order for our top four teams, and then in the A tier, kind of lingering on is Florida State, Texas, Alabama, Oregon, and Louisville, and Penn State at the at the end there. Yep. Um, and we kind of have three mini tiers inside of A, if you can't tell by the way I spaced them. Um, yeah, it's starting to get a little slim. Um, I got really tempted to talk about what if this was a 12 team playoff, but we don't have time. I really kind of I really wanted to, though. I thought it would be fun, but we don't have time, unfortunately. Um so yeah, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna end it here. Um we're gonna go. I'm gonna ask everyone to come join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh I'm gonna ask you to help us out. If you listen, if you've been listening to us all year, and I know the holiday season's coming, and I know a lot of people are asking money. I I, I get that. Um but if you've listened to us all year and you've done so for free, um consider even if you're like jared i'm, I'm i don't want to i don't care about getting access to early episodes you know sometimes several hours early <laughs> the, next, the previous day instead of getting it like monday morning you might get it sunday night um i don't care about getting early access to episodes uh, i don't care about avoiding all of those spreaker ads that run before and after and in the middle of the show um I don't care about 
the Discord server. I'm, I'm not a Discord. I'm not someone who's going to join a Discord server. And I don't care about any of the benefits. So as much as you try and sell us on the Patreon from that, Jared, I just I don't really care. We do have a casino in the Discord server. This is true, Spikes. Um, maybe just do it because you listened all year and because Kyle and I devote a lot of time to this. Um, we love it. We we I would say we would do it for free. Well, we have done it for free. Um, and even the money that we do make off of it does not even come close to justifying the time we put into it. I, I, I could take the hours I put into this and take it to an Amazon warehouse and make substantially more money. Um, we just do this because we like it. But, you know, we'd like to maybe upgrade equipment and we'd like to, you know, do stuff like that to make the, the show as good as we can make it and to justify the time we put into it and may, maybe three dollars a month which you don't have to do. I know I, oh, Jared, another monthly subscription. You can just do $32 and that's for, that's for the entire year. And then you can cancel it next year. And then you can just say, hey, you know, Jared, I, I did it. I did it. I just, I, I, I did the $32 and then I'm just, um, then I'm good after that. And you know what? I'm going to say, thank you. Uh, I don't, I don't expect everyone to stay around forever. I'm just going to say thank you. So if we've provided that entertainment to you during this entire football season, 32 bucks for to pay for the entire year up front. And like I said, you do get to skip all those Spreaker ads by listening through Patreon instead of Spreaker. And it's super easy to set up and all that. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, we we'll talk about uh, CJ Stroud hey, here. Hold on. Hold on real quick. No, Zach, you cannot find out my address in the Discord server. That is not a thing you can find in the Discord server. Sorry, Kyle, go ahead. Uh, CJ Stroud having himself another another uh, come from behind victory here. Back-to-back um, -back week weeks where he leads a team under two minutes to win the game here. 356 yards in this game here. He, do he does have a pick in this one, but he does add two touchdowns, one on the ground, one in the air. The past two weeks here, Jared, he's thrown for 826 yards and six touchdowns, well, seven, seven total touchdowns in the past two games here. Yeah, as you said, Stroud is him. It's is a lot he of running? yards. He's in the running for the MVP, right? Oh, I don't that's know. Good question. Good question. Yeah, I I don't know the I don't know the leaders and all that of who's who's doing but, well and all. That. But offensive but, rookie of the year seems to be his. I'll say yes. that. Uh, Bryce Young does not look as good, but he's let's not you know he's he's still a, he's a rookie. To, let's not bury him. To what I according to what I quickly put up here, C.J. Stroud is currently seventh and passing yards yeah but he has momentum he does have momentum yeah yeah cj stroud should have won actually, actually has actually has more than that because this is an updated to today's um stats but either way he was he was seventh going into this weekend gangland gangland is telling me not to sugarcoat my analysis of bryce young He's a rookie, man. What Stroud is doing is exceptional. But I'm not going to bury Bryce Young because he's not exceptional as a rookie. Not everyone figures it out right away. Um, he has about 900, 800 less yards and is, has eight touchdowns and seven interceptions for the year. Bryce Young? Mm-hmm. Again, it's it's also a worse team for what it's worth. Not that Houston's great; they aren't. Yeah, I was going to say Houston is not that good of a team either. But you know what? Noah Brown is having a good game, good year. So how far. is how is 
And I say this with all love and respect to Noah Brown. How's he still in the NFL? <laughs> As in games like this, he find, he finds ways to to make an impact here. He had seven receptions, 172 yards. Because he and can get 150 minute, yards in back-to-back back games. Yeah, I know, but it just... Yeah. Of all the wide receivers who you would have expected to have insanely long careers in the NFL, which how many years has Brown been in the NFL now? See, he was picked in 2017. That's a long time. You, you are a dude if you last in the NFL for longer than three or four years. I don't know how many people... Uh, people throw around words like bust and bum and trash and whatever all the time. Most people who even get into an NFL training camp don't make it in the league past three years. Let, let alone the guys who never even get an invite to a training camp. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nice to see you too, Connor. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's um, I think that's all we got for for today, Jared. Yep, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, tonight's ending music is uh, Defiance, Ohio. They are a band that was once based in Columbus a long time ago. Not that long ago. Actually, yeah, probably that long ago. I'm getting old. I'm going to die soon. That's OK. Um, but anyway, um, balls even, yeah, don't forget about them. I'm not going to finish that sentence. Um, <laughs> Defiance Ohio is the name of the band. Uh, check them out. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Defiance Ohio. <laughs>